Hey, I'm George at Lost Coast Outfitters, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about leaders and Tippet today. And so um, the first thing uh, I wanted to start talking about is leaders. And for leaders, um, it's important to understand the anatomy of a leader um, when we're considering a bias. So let's start with uh, the back end here. So we've got the looped end. This is a tapered leader. Some people think that uh, a tapered leader starts thick here and tapers all the way down to what's called the tippet or the thinnest part of the leader. Uh, the butt section here, um, you have about 40% of the butt section. This is all uniform diameter. And then you go into 20% of taper and then 40% of tippet. So that's the typical formula most manufacturers use for tapered leaders. 40% tippet, the thinnest section. 20% taper, that's going from the butt to the tippet section. And then 40% butt, and that's the thickest section of your uh, leader. Okay, so now that we understand what the lead, tapered leader is comprised of, uh, as far as taper is concerned, we need to understand the two different materials that uh, leaders are made out of. Leaders and both tippet are made out of. So you have um, what's sometimes called monofilament, which um, isn't really a great descriptor of it because uh, both types are technically monofilament. Mono meaning one, filament meaning string. So you have one filament. Um, so it's actually nylon and nylon has a couple advantages. It floats. Um, it's typically, it knots very well because it's a very soft material. It, because it's so soft, it's not very abrasion resistant. So um, it's it's easily chafed and things like that. So while it knots well, it's not good for dragging through the rocks and sticks and things like that. The other type of material is fluorocarbon. And fluorocarbon is denser than water, so it sinks. Um, it's also very abrasion resistant. It's a very hard material. Um, but because of this, it doesn't knot very well. And you need to usually put some extra wraps to help distribute um, the pressure um, because what will happen is it's such a hard material, it cuts itself very easily. So if you get that overhand knot or that wind knot in your line in fluorocarbon, it goes to about 20% of brake strength. Whereas with nylon monofilament, it's about 80%, uh, maintains about 80% of its brake strength. Okay, so now that we understand uh, the two different types, we've got nylon and fluorocarbon. Um, leaders and tippet. Let's talk a little bit more about the, the system that they're measured in. So you've probably all seen out there the X system. You've got 4X, 5X, 6X, things like that. So the this is kind of an esoteric thing, but the X refers to diameter. And that was really important when you're putting uh, gut leaders and things like that through um, the eye of flies. And we've kind of adopted that into our future. So uh, into future fishing. So I'm going to grab two different types. Both, um, these are both nylon leaders, um, so they're, they're both gonna float. But you'll notice that the, um, the brake strength on this Zero X is 18 pounds, because this is a much more sophisticated version of nylon that Rio has come out with that gives you a little bit higher brake strength for the same diameter. So 15 pound on the PowerFlex and 18 pounds on the PowerFlex Plus. They're exactly the same diameter, same length, just a different nylon compound. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about um, uh, the uh, X system. So the base X, so zero X, meaning um, th that's the, the thickest the X system really measures uh, is 11 thousandths of an inch in diameter. So if you go to one X, it'll be 10 thousandths of an inch in diameter. Two X is 9 thousandths of an inch in diameter. Three X is gonna be eight, thousandths of an inch in diameter and all the way down to you could technically have up to a, well you couldn't have 11x tippet because it would have no diameter so um, the the furthest you could go down would technically be um, 10x which would be one thousandths of an inch which would be very 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 thin a lot of different leaders out there to choose from and I want to talk about how we think about leaders so let's first cover length Length is, um, so if we have a really long leader, that's gonna be great for fishing to very wary fish. So, um, you know, you need a delicate presentation, the water is very slow moving, and if there's a big disruption in the surface of the water, the, the fish are gonna spook out. So, um, say you're fishing on a lake, a spring creek, or New Zealand, somewhere where the water's really gin clear, and you want a nice, uh, gentle presentation, a long, say, nine to 15 foot leader is what you're gonna be looking for there. Now, conversely, if you're fishing um, a fast-moving freestone stream where the, the surface of the water is really broken up by uh, white water and waves and rocks and all sorts of things um, just by the speed of the current, 
a much shorter leader will do. So something like seven and a half feet or something like that. The fish aren't as wary or spooky. Um, you can get away with something a lot shorter. That's going to be easier to cast, particularly for beginners. Shorter leaders are easier. And um, if, conversely, too, if you have a large fly, something like this, um, that's very heavy or something that's wind resistant like this, um, using a much shorter leader is going to tether that fly to the mass in the fly line and it's going to help it turn over much better. So heavy or wind resistant fly go with a short leader. Um, that's going to make your life a lot easier out there. And so let's go back to the still water situation. We're fishing a lake where fish are very sensitive to any little dimples on the surface film of the water. So that's how they eat. They pay attention to those little dimples. Uh, mayfly, all its little feet poking down on the dimples of the water. Fish are very clued into that. They're keyed into that. That's part of how they survive. And so if you have this kind of long F-shaped leader mark that's sitting on the surface film of the water uh, and making that big dent and refracting light down in, in a way that's obvious that that bug is attached to some line, guaranteed that they're, they're going to be clued into that and not eat your fly. I'll tell you a little story. I was fishing a spring creek one time uh, and a fish was sipping. PMD spinners knew what it was eating. I tried every PMD spinner in my box. I was fishing a nine, 10 foot, uh, 6X liter uh, nylon. And I threw every single fly in my box at it. And then finally I decided, well, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna switch out my leader to uh, have a fluorocarbon tippet so that the tippet would sink just below the surface film of the water and I wouldn't have that dimpling effect uh, close to my fly. So I tried all my flies, finally decided to switch my tippet. First cast uh, was the first fly that I had used. Uh, fish ate it right off the bat. So you know, paying attention to, to um, the, the effect that your tippet is having on the surface film of the water is a very important aspect to still water, slow water fishing situations. Switch gears to uh, whether it's uh, nymphing, indicator fishing, streamer fishing, anything subsurface, swinging soft tackles, you're going to want to choose a fluorocarbon leader. And the reason is, is that fluorocarbon sinks a little bit, um, so you're not going to be fighting the buoyancy of the nylon material when, when you're fishing. So. The other part of that is that it's very abrasion resistant. So if you're going through rocks or um, anytime you're going to be getting hung up or anything like that, it's really nice to have a fluorocarbon material because it's so hard and it won't be abraded as easily. Um, the other component that you're thinking about, the thinner of diameter that your tippet is, the quicker it's going to sink. So um, it's just not going to have as much resistance cutting through the water. It's like using a big thick meat cleaver to cut something versus a really sharp fillet knife that's nice and thin. It's going to cut through the water better. Um, so that's a consideration when considering what tippet to use um, when, when nymph fishing is how quickly do you want it to sink. The other aspect is how large a fish are you going to be catching and how large is the fly, right? So you can't attach a 6x, a really thin tippet to uh, say a size 8 fly. The, it just won't work. It'll, you can't even tie a knot on it. So um, the, the, the conventional wisdom out there is you take the hook size, so say you have a 12 and you divide it by 3, you would end up on 4x. That's conventional wisdom. It works pretty well, so if you need a rule to follow, that is a good one. Thanks for watching. We hope you learned a few things about leaders and tippet. Um, if you did, uh, go ahead and like the video. And um, if you want to see more stuff like this, sign up for our fishing report at www.lostcoastoutfitters.com. We send it out every Thursday at noon. We've got one of the best fishing reports in California, and uh, we hope you sign up. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the water.